We are coming to the end of our uh, 2016 year. Grace grows. That doesn't mean that grace stops growing. <laughs> it just keeps right on going. And uh, we're entering into 2017. You might have seen the new banner out there, uh, Pursuing Companionship 2017, Jesus and You. And uh, we're going to be talking about Jesus today, of course. We're into uh, the, uh, the Christmas season. And i got to be honest with you. I'm really, really excited that uh, I got to go first on the Christmas message. Some of you may not know this or not, uh, but um, Christmas is my favorite time of year. I love all the other stuff. I love Thanksgiving, especially in the Nazarene Church. Amen. <laughs> but I really, really love Christmas. Um, are the PowerPoints working? Yep. There they are. There we go. And so today I got a message called, uh, What's the Big Deal? What's the Big Deal? I love Christmas, and uh, part of it is because um, in my former addictions, I got locked up and I got sent to a wonderful program where life transformation happened called Teen Challenge. And... Uh, I was in Teen Challenge uh, for, for two Christmases, and I, I loved it. Like, I love hearing the carols today, you know, because we'd go around from church to church, and uh, we'd hear carols, and we'd watch Christmas pageants and, and stuff like that, and it just, even though I was uh, over a thousand miles away from my family, it just become a very special time for me. And when I was in the program, and, and I let this be a word for you, like Scott was saying, uh, Christmas is a rough time of year for a lot of people, you know. It's, it's a lonely time a year for a lot of people, and things just seem to fall apart. When I was in the program at Teen Challenge, they used to tell, tell me, you know, well, hey, just uh, just give the Lord this year, and He'll give you the next 50 in return. You know, and for a guy in recovery, that's that was good advice, you know. And so if you're if you're alone this year, you know, give the Lord this one, and I promise you He'll give you at least the next 50 back. Amen, somebody? Good. Now, see, I was in the program for two Christmases, and so they said that to me for two years in a row. So apparently... According to my math, I'm going to be like 126 or something before the Lord calls me home. <laughs> but I do love Christmas. I love Christmas. I love this time of year. Um, and I made a promise to myself when I was in Teen Challenge uh, that I, I would never waste another Christmas. Because in my addiction and, and being in worldliness, it, just, it was just another year, you know, another family festivity to show up to and get drunk and this and that, but I promised myself that I, I would make every single Christmas count, make it magical, you know, and just a, and just a special time of, um, of building family memories. So, and uh, and I've held to that. I've held to that. Um, so, as a matter of fact, i got a couple pictures here from my house. Um, if you come to my house at Christmas time, I'm going to be honest with you, it looks like an elf threw up in there or something like that. There's just, there's just stuff everywhere. This is, this is our, our front uh, divider when you come in, you know, it's like a little winter wonderland. There's Lucy the elf on the shelf on the candle there, uh, you know, just there, there's Christmas stuff all over the place. That's our that's our dining room table, which we're not going to be using because it's 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 Christmas winter wonderland town, you know. Uh, we we even got them hanging from the ceilings. There's so many stuffed animals there. In short, you never know what's going to happen at our house at Christmas time, such as hey. what's this guy right here? <laughs> yeah. Greg, I, I, Greg, I don't know how that got in there. I'm, I'm, yeah. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to tell anyone your origin story or anything like that. <laughs> That's the elf that I was talking about that threw up. You know. <laughs> I don't know if you know this or not, but Greg and I have different mothers, you know. So. <laughs> back, back, back to the pictures. Back, jump it back in. I'm shaking it off, shaking it off. Yeah, Greg, I don't know how that got in there, sorry. Uh, and there's old jolly, jolly Saint Nick. Now, Christmas is a big deal at my house. Christmas is such a big deal at my house that uh, I even used it to propose to my wife one year. Amen? Mm -hmm. Christmas Eve. It was the perfect time to, you know, just... New beginnings, new things, and uh, I use it for us. Now, gentlemen, hey, have everybody up here. Guys, single guys, married guys, I'm going to give you a little free tip here. A little free tip. Anytime you got to do something important, like a first date or you propose or something, always do it on like a, a well-known day, like the 4th of July or Christmas, because dates are very important to women. Amen? You don't remember our first date? You don't remember when you posed? Yes, I do. December 24th. <laughs> it's a free time on a whole, whole other level. H and L, Scott. Whole other level. Yeah. <laughs> do it on, do it on important date. That way they, they you, you can't forget. But okay. I think you guys get it. Christmas is a big deal in my house, and and Christmas, Christmas in general, you'll you'll see a lot of big deals. You'll see the big deals of uh, Black Friday. Amen. 
Once a year come Black Friday, people are leaving the Thanksgiving top table, waddling out of there, you know, and then they're going to the, to the stores to, to get the, the, the next big deal. You know, there's a big deal. Everything's going on sale. Let me tell you something. Black Friday ain't got nothing on the Chapman family when it comes to big deals, okay? Us Chapman boys, what we do is we are yard sale, we are yard sale dumpster diving thrift store junkies. Hey, that's, <laughs> and we, that's our, oh man, that's our forte, you know, right there. Man, we will get one man's trash is another man's treasure is another man's Christmas present. Hey, that's, <laughs> that's what we do, you know. Hey, now see, you guys are buying your presents on like, uh, you know, Thanksgiving. Chances are, if you get a present from me or my old man, we bought it in June, you know. And it's, it's, it's been wrapped and it's been waiting for you. Could be a thing of breath mints, could be a gag gift, or it could be a hippopotamus for Christmas. I don't know. You know, but we put a lot of thought. We put a lot of thought into our uh, Christmas presents. And we, we, we take a lot of care to wrap them, to not give away what it is. Presents, Christmas, is a big deal. Big deal in the chat. Say that's something. Amen. But a bigger deal than that, a bigger deal than that is the birth of Christ. Amen? Yes. The birth of Christ is, is a big, 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 big deal. So as a matter of fact, it's the biggest deal. It's the biggest deal ever, not just of a century, of, of, of a lifetime, you know? But let, let's be honest. Can we be honest here in church? Amen? <laughs> we should be. I think this is a safe place. I, I feel safe. I feel safe here. Telling the truth. After so many years showing up for Christmas services, Christmas Eve services, uh, the birth of Christ, you know, becomes, eh, you know, I've heard this before. You know, I was in Team Challenge for, for two years there, and we'd go to a, a Christmas message every Sunday, and then one on Sunday nights, and then usually one on Wednesday, so I did the math. And uh, I've been saved for 10 years, but I've sat through like 70, 72 Christmas messages, you know? And just after a while, I mean, let's be honest, it just... It, it's, it's well, I've heard this before, you know, the baby Jesus, the shepherds in the field, and this and that, you know, and we kind of go numb to it, don't we? Yeah. Oh, I'm the only one, amen? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm just saying what's true. We kind of, we kind of, after a while, we, we, we tend to get numb, numb to it, you know? And uh, I want to do the opposite of that today. I want to, I want to, I want to really just pound it home. Just what, what is the big deal about the birth of Christ? What's the big deal? about Christmas. So that's that's what we're going to talk about today. So in order to find out what the big deal about Christmas is, we got to go to Luke chapter 2. So Luke chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from, uh, boy, I'm a preacher, not a speller. It's from Caesar. There, okay, there it is, Caesar. I got the light in my eye. A decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quinarius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, every one, to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth and to Judah to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was a, who was a child, or who was with child, that's, that's much more appropriate, uh, since it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be to her, for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, uh, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you that you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, and with the angel was a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, singing glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them in heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. Lord, I just ask that you bless the reading of your word today, Lord. But it hit its target. Now, I want to do something a little bit different than I normally do up here today. Uh, I want to play a game. Who wants to play a game? Raise your hand. The rest of you guys, you can go ahead. Go on. <laughs> Who wants to play a game today? Yay! Amen. I come to church to have a good time. So we're going to. Yay! We're going to play a game called What's the Big Deal? Okay? Now, here's how this game's going to go. Anytime you see that PowerPoint slide right there, Everybody's got one in visual right there. Anytime you see that PowerPoint slide, 
and I say, that's a big deal. You guys got to respond. You got to yell back. What's the big deal? Okay? It's going to be fun. Trust me. You're going to love it. <laughs> I made Lisa and Brianna do it in the house. And they didn't like it at first, but after a while, they really, they really dug it. You know? I promise you. So, when I, you know, there's two things required for you to say, what's the big deal? Number one, that slide. And number two, that, that's a big deal. And then you guys say, what's, what's the big, big deal? deal? Okay, good. Let's try it. Let's try it together. Okay. That's a big deal. What's the big deal? Now, that's, now, okay. So, you understand the rules. So, let's, let, let us begin. Let's, let's, let's break. Uh, I got good news here. I only got four verses I'm going to cover today. Yeah, yeah, right there, Scott. Scott said, "Amen, somebody." I got four verses here. We're, we're gonna from, from our scripture that we're gonna cover. Uh, let's look at verse ten. This is how we're gonna find out what the big deal about the birth of Christ is. Verse ten. Then the angel said to them, "Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people." Now that's a big deal. What's the big deal? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the big deal is that about the birth of Christ is you don't have to be afraid anymore. Amen, Amen somebody? Amen. Hallelujah. You don't have to be afraid anymore. One of the things we're afraid of is we're afraid to come to God. We are absolutely afraid to come to God. Before knowing God, we're afraid to come to Him because of a multitude of reasons. Number one, we think when we come to God, hey, the party's over, right? I yeah. mean, He's just up there in heaven. He's waiting to hit us with the hammer. Like a whack-a-mole with Chuck E. Cheese or something like that. <laughs> Second, we're get out of line. Here, boom, 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 boom. You know, we're afraid of what he's going to do to us. Because, I mean, let's, let's face it. He's up there in heaven. He's just been waiting for us to come into church. And he's been waiting for us to come in there. And he's really going to let us have it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? That's what we think, but that's not the reality. Amen. That's not, that's not the God we serve. We're afraid to come to God because we, we don't know what he's going to do. There's no way that the creator of heaven and earth could be pleased with us. There's no way that he could be pleased with our life and the mess we've made out of it. There's no way that he could he could love us like them Christians say. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're afraid. We're afraid to come to God before knowing him. Before knowing him. We're afraid to come to him because we don't know what's going to happen. But this isn't nothing new. This is nothing new. In the book of Exodus, uh, chapter 19 and 20, um, the Israelites had just been brought out of slavery, and they and they and they, they come to the to the mountain of the Lord, and uh, God was revealing Himself. He was revealing Himself to His bride, and uh, He said, "Come, come closer." And, and the people were like, "No, no, no, Moses, you go talk to God on our behalf. Well, you know, we we don't want to go. You know, at least He consume us. We're too sinful. We're not good enough. You know, we 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 can't go anywhere near the Lord. You do it for us." And Moses said, "Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. This is this is your God. Come on." Come on, and, and, and all these years later, uh, nothing's changed. Yep. Nothing's changed. Our guilt, our sin, it <coughs> separates us from God. Yep. Mm -hmm. It makes us afraid to come to Him. Amen. It makes us afraid because we, we don't know what's going to happen. The second thing we're afraid of is we are afraid of change. See, because we think when we come to God, when we come to God that everything's going to change. There's no way He could possibly use us as we are. We've got to enter some kind of revamp process or something like that. You know, and I don't know, well, maybe God's going to send us to Africa or something like that as a missionary. I tell you what, if you're watching this in Africa, you're probably just as worried that he's going to send you to America. You know? <laughs> we need missionaries too, you know. <laughs> We're a mess over here, you know. <laughs> but we don't know. We don't know what's going to change, you know. For the longest time in my drinking and my addiction, you know, I thought, well, man, I can't stop drinking, you know. Who would I be without the, without the booze? I wouldn't have any friends. I wouldn't, uh, what would I do? I'm mistaken with what I did with who I was. I mistake what I what I, I participated in as, as my identity. I'm not booze. You know, you are not anger, you are not heroin, you are not jealousy, you're not any of those things. You are you. You know, sometimes we mistake what we do with who we are and then we're afraid of change because if I come to God, I'm obviously going to have to get rid of this in my life. Amen? Amen? And who would I be without that? I've been carrying it for so long, who would I be without that? You know? So we're afraid of the unknown. What would God require of me if I... If, if I did come to him, I, I need to come to him, but what would, what would have to go? You know? And we're, and we're afraid of that. We're afraid of what life would look like without those old things that we're, we're holding on to. Um, there's seldom a better story in all of Scripture, except for in Matthew uh, chapter um, 19, where you hear the story of a rich young ruler. This guy, you know, he wanted God in his life, but at the same time he had some stuff that he wasn't ready to let go of. Amen? 
Yeah. And he comes to Jesus, he's like, hey, Jesus, Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? You know, what must I do? And he's like, well, you know the commandments, you know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt honor your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your old college roommate, amen, somebody? <laughs> <laughs> he says, you should do all these things. He's like, well, Jesus, <laughs> you know, I've done all these since my youth, you know. And Jesus says, uh, yeah, but this, this one thing you lack. He's like, sell everything you own and uh, give it to the poor and then come follow me. And see, that's the thing about the Holy Spirit. There's always this one thing you lack. Yeah. Yeah. And once you get done with that, and he deals with you on that, then it's another thing. So it's a, it's a continual choice. But for this guy, the rich young ruler, he's like, you know, money's not a sin for everybody. Some people are great with honoring God <coughs> with their money. You know, all of you are great with that, with the tithes and the daring faith and the change for a dollar. You know, but for some people, money's a stronghold. Yeah. And for this guy, possessions was a stronghold. You know, and so he, the guy's like, man, I can't, I can't give up that. You know, what would life be? Without that. Yeah. So he turned around and he went away sad. You know, he went away sad. Ultimately, this guy's possessions possessed him. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and so, you know, the guy didn't know what life would be like without those. And so that kept him from coming to God. Um, another thing we're afraid of is joy. Um, it, I want you to check this right here in the verse. It's funny. <laughs> then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, great joy, which will be to all people. Uh, I suppose I have a slide for this next one. I forgot to do it, but we'll just pretend it's there. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but what, what we describe as fear, the angel described as joy. We're afraid of joy. Hmm. Something, you know, by coming to the Lord. Now, check that. It says, then the angel said, do not be afraid, for I bring you tidings of great joy. These guys are like, man, this is scary. This is, I don't, I don't, I'm afraid of this. He's like, no, 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 this is something to be happy about. This is something good. This is something wholesome. This is something wonderful that they're afraid of. Ultimately, we're afraid of joy. We are afraid of the unknown. We're afraid of what God calls good mm -hmm. or joyful. We have a different definition of joy. For some of us, joy is staying in our mess, the same old, same old, the quota. For some of us, joy is a little bit more money in our pocket on payday, a new car, or this or that, you know, but... Uh, our definition of joy is not always the same as the Lord's definition of joy, and we are afraid of that definition of joy. I just haven't really got much to say about that. I just I thought that was pretty neat that what these guys are afraid of, the angel calls joy. So, anyways, moving on to our next verse. Verse 11. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. <laughs> now, that's a big deal. What's the deal? Oh, I caught y'all asleep. <laughs> Rewind. Okay. If there is a Savior born. Now that's a big deal. What's the big deal? Well, if you guys really, really want to know, I'll tell you. The big deal is that Jesus can save you. Amen, somebody. Amen. Jesus can save you. First of all, He can save you from your sins. See, here's the problem and, and why we are afraid to come to God. The Bible says... For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, yep. 23. <laughs> Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. Yep. Right. It's the same. It doesn't matter if you cheated on your third grade test or if you cheated on your wife. Sin is sin in the eyes yeah. of the holy God. I mean, there's levels of sins and some, some things he calls abominations. and just He, he does look at that, but he, he, he looks at sin different, but he punishes it all the same. If you go into God's court of law, buddy, you're not walking out with probation or extended time, you're walking out the same sentence. Death. And that's a problem. How does God have fellowship with a bunch of dirty sinners? How does a holy and perfect God have fellowship with a bunch of sinners? Because if, if the wages of sin and somebody's got to die, if there's got to be a penalty, somebody's got to die, and it's got to be us, how does He ever have fellowship with us? He never could. Yep. But that's where Christ comes in. Amen. At the moment of sentencing, See, God doesn't operate on time as we operate on time. You know, we're, we're here, and then next Sunday you're going to be here because Pastor Scott said you better be here. Amen, right. somebody? Amen. <laughs> Amen. They better be here, Scott. <laughs> but God doesn't work that. See, he's the Alpha and the Omega, you know. We haven't reached sentencing yet, but in God's world, it's already happened. Mm. You know, it's already happened. And unless you have the blood of Jesus covering you, judgment will be passed upon you. That's right. It will. It's it's coming. It's 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 already happened. It's already done. But the, the nice thing is, is that it doesn't have to happen. 
Yeah. That's the big deal about Christmas. The slide's not up, so don't say it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the big deal, is that somebody has paid your fine, someone has paid your penalty, and it was Jesus Christ. Amen. He saved you from your sins. Amen. You don't have to be eternally separated from God. You don't have to be in eternal torment and punishment because Jesus Christ paid, paid it all. Yes. At the moment where God was about to hand in judgment, Jesus come in and he, he advocated for us and he says, Whoa! This one's mine. This one's mine. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And he says, You're free. Enter into my rest. Enter into the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the universe. Amen. Yes. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. We go from, in an instant, we go from being enemies of God to friends. All right. To be in brothers, to be in children of God. Amen. Jesus can save you from the penalty of your sins. It doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done, it doesn't Amen. matter. Right. The blood of Jesus covers a multitude of sins. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Second Corinthians 5.21. I've got it up here on the screen for you. It says that, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Now, I don't know if you get that or not. It took me a while to wrap my head around it. But every sin, every sin that I ever did was nailed to the cross with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. See, Thank Jesus you, Christ was sinless, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But He was sinless. He was perfect. But God imputed my sins into Christ's account there, and He took the hit for it. The way to sin is death. Yep. Amen. Amen. And so it took him who knew no sin to be sin for me. Mm. Um, could you imagine the guilt? You know the guilt when you've sinned and you've done something wrong? Yep. You, you know that guilt, that shame? Yep. yep. You know? Imagine carrying the sins of the world. I wonder, I wonder mm. if Christ felt the guilt of it. I know he didn't do it. But I wonder if he, he felt that heaviness. I mean, he, he was sweating, you know, blood, you know? I mean, I, I, I wonder what that was like. That's, that's for another time or another, another thing. second thing Jesus saves you from is He saves you from your guilt. <laughs> he saves you from your guilt. Hallelujah. See, when we're not right with God, you know it. Amen. You know it before you get saved, and you know it after you get saved. Yeah, There's something yeah. between you and the Holy Spirit. And you got that guilt on you. You go to sleep, you know, it's there. You wake up. Good morning to me. <laughs> yep. There's no escaping it, you know. He saves you from your guilt. Now, I don't know about you guys, but man, I've done some pretty awful stuff in my life. Amen. I've done some unspeakable stuff in my life. Here's a list of them. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, yeah, we've all got that. Uh, I had a lot of guilt for the things I'd done when I first come into the flock, into the fold. And uh, Jesus, he, he, he saved me from my sins, and that would have been enough. That would, have been enough, that would have been more than a punk like me deserved, you know? But he also saved me from the guilt of it. Amen. He saved me Lord. from the guilt. It was like, like I, had a, I, I made an exit sketch of my life, you know? And he just Amen. flipped that thing and slate clean, son. And, I mean, I felt bad for the things. And there's times where things come up and I'm like, man, I wish I wouldn't have done that. But I did, you know? Mm -hmm. But I don't walk around with that baggage anymore, right. you know? Imagine Thank a guy God. with a, you know, a bag. You know, just carrying it on in another bag. We pick up all this baggage in life, and a lot of that baggage is guilt. And uh, I don't carry that guilt anymore. I have been Thank forgiven. I have been forgiven, and the slate has been wiped clean. Does that mean I don't mess up any more? No, I, I probably messed up twice today, at least, you know, when the day's young. You know, but I go to the Lord, and, you know, and uh, the blood of Jesus washes me from all Amen. sin. You know, and I, it's a relationship, you know, and, and the guilt is gone. There is How there, there's no peace. There's no yes. peace without God. And we're going to talk about that here in a minute, too. Romans 8, 1 uh, says, Therefore, thou, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you are in, in, which means, you know, I have a relationship with Jesus Christ and He is my Lord and Savior. Um, that doesn't mean you're not going to mess up. You're not going to trip and fall. You're not going to fall down a thousand times. It's not that. It's just saying if you're in, if you have a relationship and you're pursuing Him, there's no condemnation. And if there is condemnation, that's not of Him. Amen? That's you. That's you or the devil. Amen? That doesn't mean He don't check you on certain things, but there's a difference between correction and condemnation. Amen, Amen. somebody? Amen. So y'all know what I'm talking about. Other thing that He can save you from, and this is my personal favorite, is Jesus can save you from yourself. Amen. Amen. 
Now, I tell you, I, I ain't going to lie to you. If he, if, you know, saving me of my sins was more than I deserved. Saving me from my guilt, that's a blessing. But I tell you what, if he can't save you from your sins, or from, save you from yourself mm -mm. and the power of sin, then what are we doing? You're yeah. right. Amen? Amen. He can't. He is able. He right. is able, man. I probably got saved. Um, you know, come out of Teen Challenge, failure never occurred to me. Failure never entered my darkest dreams. I'm sober. I've got a relationship with Jesus Christ. No big deal. Life is going to be my oyster. <laughs> you know? I didn't know. I didn't know that something still remained inside of me. And I made some mistakes. I made some big mistakes. You know? But, uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I, it was at that point that I just really dug in on my walk with the Lord. I kind of just started reading everything I could get my hands on, presenting myself accountable, and this and that. And I just, I thought to myself, I'm like, what, Jesus can save me from my sins, but he can't save me from myself, from the power of sin? What is this? And then I, and then I found out, he can. Good. He yeah. can. Yeah. He is able. Right. You know, he just needs, he, you know, it's not about my um, ability. It's about my availability. Right. You know, and he can save you from the power of sin and death. Let's look Amen. At uh, 1 Corinthians 5.17. But thank God. Everybody say, thank God. Thank, thank God. God. But thank God He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. There is a victory on this side of eternity. Uh, I just I couldn't believe that I'm forever walking in, in, in the destination of heaven, but I'm never reaching victory on this side of the line. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. I'm forever walking, but never reaching. That's, that's garbage. You know, that's a lie from the pit of hell. There is victory on this Amen. side. Amen. There is victory and power over sin to where, you know, you get presented with something, you're like, no, I don't want that. Amen. I don't want anything that's going to come between me and this. Right. Like, Amen. You know? It's good. So, Jesus can save you from ourselves. Next verse. Two to go here. Uh, halfway there. Verse 14. Then they, uh, the angel said, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Uh, that's a big deal. Amen. What's a big deal? Well, I probably shouldn't tell you, but you know, since it's you guys, you know, I'll tell you. The big deal is that there is a peace available on earth for God's people. Amen. For God's people. Look, 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 look at this verse from Isaiah 48, 22 here real fast. It says, but there is no peace for the wicked, says the Lord. There is no peace for the wicked. Amen. Um, that's why when I say the big deal is that there is a peace available. It's available on earth for God's people. This peace is exclusive. Exclusive to God's people. That's not saying that unsaved people don't have some form of peace or joy in their own life. Because they do. But this is a peace that surpasses all Amen. understanding. Amen. Amen, somebody? And the guilt Amen. is gone and the, and, and, the, and, the, and the peace is there. But the wicked, the wicked, there is no peace. You know, they, they, they put their hope and their trust in all these things of the world. Well, if I just had a job, or I call it, uh, they're down with the case of the if-onlys, you know. If only I had this job. If only I had a car. If only I had a relationship or something like that. There's no peace. They're toiling. They're scheming. They're, they're, they're doing all these things, working out all these things in their head, you know, about what's going to make them happy or what's going to make them feel whole or complete. The only thing that could ever make you feel whole or complete is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, that's a big deal. Amen. You know? That is a big deal about Christmas and the birth of Christ, is that I can be whole, I can be complete, there is peace. Now, let's talk about this peace. Now, the glory, the glory for this peace is God's. The glory belongs to God. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. You all still Amen. 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 There's nothing you can do to earn this peace, to earn this grace, to earn this salvation. I hear people say all the time, all, and Scott, thank you. Thank you so much for teaching me this lesson. Amen. I knew it in books, but I didn't know it in heart. Scott Brothers, you taught me that. It took a whole year of 2016, Grace Gross, for me to get it, you know. <laughs> but I get it now. And I get it more so not because of the words he's spoken, but from the patience he showed me. Amen. Thank I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I'm not an easy guy to work with. Amen. Really? <laughs> Amen. Hey, Dan. <laughs> I'm not cool, Dan. <laughs> Scott, I saw Dan Magdalene tripping on change for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> in my relationship with the Lord, or in recovery, guys in recovery, y'all with me? Um, we have a tendency to go legalistic or traditionalism, you know? And us people in the church, we have that tendency too. You know Amen. what I'm talking about? Yeah. Well, Amen. this is the way the Bible says to do it. 
or this is the way the big book says to do it. Or, you know, uh, well, this is the way we've always done it in church, or this is the way that we've always done it in AA, NA, this and that. We, we tend to go fall right in line to that stuff, man. And, and, and we think, well, if I could just follow the rules, or if I could just fall in line, or if I could just march to the tune and look like everybody else and talk like everybody else, if I could just roll up my sleeves and get her done, if I could just pull myself up by the bootstraps, you know, or put on the mask, you know, yeah. I'll be accepted of God. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll be accepted Amen. by others. Another lie from the now. For by grace you Amen. have been saved. Amen. And not of yourself, at least anyone should boast. It is the right. gift of God. Amen. It is a Hallelujah. gift to you. And I tell you, I know gifts. I know who gifts. I know big deals. And I tell you, the, the, the only thing you got to do when someone gives you a gift is to open it. Mm -hmm. Take it. So take it. There's nothing you can do. The glory is God's for this piece. The glory belongs to God not to you. So take it. Walk in it. Um, the price. The price for this peace is Christ. See, we talked about Christ paying the penalty for, for our sins, but we didn't talk about Christ being the perfection. See, the Bible required in the Old Testament a, 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 a sacrificial offering. There needs to be the shedding of blood to make atonement for sins. And in the Old Testament, they would use lambs, and it had to be a perfect lamb. It had to be a spotless lamb. One hoof couldn't be longer than the other, couldn't have a spot on it. It had to be a lamb without blemish. And likewise, for a sin offering, for a sin offering to pay and atone for the sins of the entire world, it had to be a lamb without blemish. The lamb that Amen. was slain since the foundation. And that Amen. lamb is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He was perfect. He was perfect. He never did anything wrong. He never did nothing wrong. He was tempted as we were tempted on all points. But he was found without yeah. sin. Yeah. See, pulling yourself up by the bootstraps and just getting it together. Well, I need to start coming to church and this and that. And you do. Amen, somebody. Amen. But uh, that, that ain't going to get you into the nope. show, guys. Nope. The merits of somebody else. Someone perfect. Someone perfect. One sacrifice to end them all. And that's Jesus Christ. Uh, where are we at? Romans 5 1. What do I got here? It says, uh, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have peace in your life, it's because of what Jesus Christ Amen. did for you on the cross. Amen. Right. Amen. Nothing you did except say, Yes. Right. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that's, all you, that's all you did. You, you took it, yes. you received it. So if you're here today and you think that you're, you know, well, if I can just start coming to church more, if I can, you know, maybe God will do something in your life. God's doing something in your life right now or you wouldn't be. Amen. 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 And He is doing something in your life and He has yet to do something in your life. Amen. Yep. And all you got to do is just keep showing up and keep running at Him. That's right. We've run at so much other stuff. Why not run at Him? Yep. Because He's the only thing running back at us. Amen. Where am I at? The purpose for this peace is reconciliation. Amen. The purpose for this peace is reconciliation. Colossians 1, 19-20. For it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell, and in Him, or by Him, to reconcile all things to Himself. By Him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having been made through the blood of Jesus on the cross. And you who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now He has... Reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach, above reproach in his sight. If, if indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, am a minister. The purpose of this peace, the birth of Christ, was for the purpose of reconciliation. Amen. God you, sent Lord. Christ for us, for you, for Thank all you, of us to be reconciled to Him. Yes. Amen. Amen. Just like the uh, the Luke Thank chapter you, fifteen, the lost and found chapter, where you hear the prodigal son. He, he's reconciling us. He's bringing us back in. He's done everything. And for us to say, for us to say, well, if I can just muster it up and get her done, you know, and maybe I'll be accepted of God. What does God say to something like that? What my sin wasn't my, my son wasn't enough. Amen. Amen. See how silly that is? Yep. God is literally dying to have a relationship with you. Amen. He put his son up there. And for us to say, well, if I could just get her done, you know, I mean, you know, hmm. is my son not enough? Should Amen. I have given more? No. You couldn't. 
to, to turn that down, to turn away from it, is the ultimate atrocity. It's the worst thing we can do to think that anything we can add on the table, well, here, Lord, I'd like to add this to your son's sacrifice, you know. No. He did this to reconcile you. Amen. He did this to reconcile. Thank you, Lord. Let's talk a little bit more about that in our next verse, in our last verse here. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, it's all over, it's all pretty much over, that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. Now that's a big deal. What's, What's the big deal? deal? <clears throat> Uh, that's a big deal. What's, What's the big deal? deal? Well, if you guys must know, if you must know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you. The big deal, the big deal is that we have a choice to respond. We have been given a choice to respond. See, God doesn't want puppets on a string just to do His bidding or this or that. He wants those who choose to love Him, who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. He Amen. wants us, it's, it's, it's a choice. Force, he, he could have, he's God, he could have made puppets, he could have made robots to force us to love him. Everybody fall in line, you know, and, you know, do what you're told, and everybody love me, I'm God. He could have done that, he's God. But forced love is a contradiction of terms. Amen? Amen. That's not love, that's dictatorship. Amen. Amen, somebody? Amen. The big deal is we have a choice to respond. Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve in the garden had the choice. They had the choice to respond. God said, hey, listen, you can eat from all these trees in the garden. You can eat from all these trees, but not that one. Not that one. And they chose. See, now, Adam and Eve, they get kind of a, a bad rap because they've been given the perfect, the perfect environment. There was no yeah. sin. You know, uh, there was all the food they could eat. And due to the dress code in heaven, I'm glad to believe that the, the weather was fabulous. Amen, something. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I understand it was really good up there, Scott. <laughs> but they had, they had it good and they messed up. But see, I think God, it, it, but the bottom line is, they didn't do anything that we wouldn't have done in their place or that we haven't done already in our current standing. Amen, somebody? We would have made the exact same decision they did. We would have took the fruit and ate thereof. They saw it was appealing yeah. to the eyes. They thought it would give gratification. And uh, they, they, they messed it up. They had a choice. They had a choice, and they chose to be the lords of their life and to do what they want. And see, God, He's holy. He can't be around sin. He had a choice to make right there. God had a choice. That's our next one. God had a choice. He looked at Adam and Eve. They messed up. They messed up. Now, God, being the Alpha and the Omega, He can see the beginning and the end. He looked down the, the halls of time, and He saw war. He saw rape. Child molestation. He saw all these horrible, horrible, god-awful things that man would do in their depravity. He saw the things that people would do in His name, in advance in His name. He saw all the people that would perish who refused to trust in Him, that refused to come in Him. And God had a choice to make. He could have chose to smite it all and start over in the, in the garden, or He could choose to proceed. Yep. And something caught his eye. When he looked down the halls of time, something caught his eye that said, you know what? This is worth the price. Amen. This is worth the Thank cost you, of Lord. my son. Thank you, Lord. This is worth proceeding forward from here despite all the pain and suffering that's going to come. Do you know what he saw? He saw you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He saw you. And he said, that's worth it all. Yep. That makes it all worth it. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Thank you, Lord. And now, we have a choice. You have a choice here today. I don't know where you're at in your walk with the Lord. But he does. And you do. I know where I'm at. We all have a choice. We can choose to serve Christ or we can choose to serve self. That was the end of my notes right there.
That is the big deal. What? Yeah, what's the big deal, Don? I'm glad you're the only one paying attention. <laughs> the big deal, John, or Don, is John 3.16. There you go. That's the big deal. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. That's the big deal. That's Amen. a sermon you can preach. Right. Amen. For God so loved the world. At the end of the day, if you want to sum it all up, if you want to sum it all up, what's it all about? And what's the gospel of my life all about? For God so loved the world. Amen. That he was only begotten Son. And I told you guys at the front of this, it's 12 o'clock, and I'm ending with this right here. And when I say I'm ending, I'm ending. I'm ending. Uh, but usually that's not the case, I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> I told you I love a big deal. I love a big deal. I love the hunt of the yard sale going through boxes of garbage to find that perfect gift for Amen. somebody. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Me and my dad got a system worked out. We go in there and we hit them with the left and right. They already saw what you know? I, I could go on and on about that. I'm going to skip the details. I love, I love a big deal. I love the, the deal. In 2007, in 2007, when I was sitting in that jail cell, I was only in five years prison because of my addictions. I opened this book that Pastor Larry and Pastor Bill Sullivan brought me, and I saw about how God, He didn't hold these people's head under water. He lifted them up out. Amen. Thank you, And He Lord. says, you can come to me. There is meaning. There is purpose. There is joy. There is peace. And all you got to do just come to me. Amen. Just come to me. When I saw that, that God could do something with the brokenness that I made, that the train wreck I left behind me in my life, when I saw the deal of the century of a lifetime, I jumped all over it. Yep. And I never looked back since. Amen. 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 And that same deal was available before I got here, and it's going to be available long after I'm gone. Unless the rapture comes. Because we're not just looking back to a time at Christmas, you know, where Christ did something for some people 2,000 years ago. And, you know, that we're not just, Christmas is not just looking back to that, it's looking ahead. Amen. Because I don't know if you know this or not, but he's coming back. Amen. Yep. And are you going to be right? Amen. Are you going to be in a right relationship with Jesus Christ? Let me tell you. I love the Christmas time, and I love all this wonderful stuff, but it's all just stuff. Yes. It's stuff I can do without, and it's stuff I'm not taking with me. Amen. Amen. The one thing that's going to matter when I get to heaven is God's going to say, what news of my son? What yep. news of my son? Did you have a relationship? I'm either going to say yes or no. You know? Yep. And so listen, John said it a couple months ago, real knows real. Um, I know a deal when I see one. Amen. And this is the best deal that anybody has ever done. I'm offering. Right. Thank you, the Lord. This is white clean. Yep. You were brought in as sons and daughters. Amen. Amen. And enjoy his rest. Hallelujah. Thank Let's you, pray. Lord. Dear Lord, as uh, we go out into this world, Lord, into this month where the world comes together, God, and we celebrate your birth and your life and your death and your atonement, God, for our sins, Lord. Let this be the Christmas that we give to you, Lord. Let this be the Christmas that we, we lift up to you as an offering, God, where we just kind of slow all the other stuff down. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for coming for me. Thank you for grabbing a hold of me. Thank you for being patient with me when I, like a sheep, go, go my own way. Thank you for always coming back for me. Thank you for believing in me, God. Yes, Lord. Lord, thank you for never tiring or growing weary. Lord, I just uh, thank you for everybody in this room that they uh, they heard that same call and they answered it. Lord, this Christmas, let our eyes be fixed upon Jesus. Let our hearts be so interwoven into yours, God, this year, this month, this life, that... Uh, People look at us and they, they can't tell where we end and you begin. Thank you. And they see us and say, these men and women have been with Jesus. <laughs> yes. 
Lord, we need you. And we love you. And we thank you. Lord, as we go out this week, Lord, please watch over us. Please draw us closer to you every day. 